Here's what a normal spool of wire for this machine looks like. It's two pounds. They're now up to $21 per two pound roll. This is 10 pounds and it's $70. So the equivalent in this would be $105. I had to create a wooden spool to roll on. I think I'll make that out of plastic later on. I just wanted to do something easy for now. This spacer needed to be added to this piece which goes on there and puts just a little bit of a tension on it so that it doesn't come unspooled. This one has only been welded once. So let's see what happens with it. So this piece has been welded twice. And there's where the welds are. So far, they're watertight. So here's the rough fitting of the cooling system. These will be connected. Just opened this can of coal tar epoxy. That's what it looks like unmixed. So according to the can, you can spray this if you put 65 PSI in the gun. What do you think? This is the activator. Check out how gooey that is. It's 60 degrees today, by the way. One of the very few days I'll be able to use the epoxy primer and get it to cure. It's actually getting kind of runny now, which is good. Here's the first coal tar epoxy application. Right now I'm just trying to protect the cooling tubes. The epoxy was horrific to work with. Here's how attempt number one came out. I think I could do a better job if I redid it, but maybe this will work. So I'll try it. The idea is that this is semi-flexible. So when the engine vibrates, it'll absorb the vibration. And then the rest is just a simple tube that goes out. There's the setup. been running for half an hour. No leaks down here. No leaks here either. I ran it for half an hour. It's about 60 degrees outside. Still didn't get any registration on the water temperature gauge. Maybe the gauge is faulty, but I don't think so because here's where it comes out. I can touch that. So it's probably like 90 degrees just based on how it feels. Here's the cooling system. This pipe goes all the way down below this level, draws in water, goes through the transmission, through the water pump, all the way through the engine. This is the output. And then it goes back into here. 
and that goes down outside the boat where the water will cool it and that goes across through here and then back outside the boat to this side which will cool it some more and then we return such thin metal my only goal was to lay down just a little bit extra so that I could hopefully make a good weld on weld number two and then seal it with weld number three. Weld number two is going to go up here. Weld number two and here's pass number three. I checked all of the welds before I filled this with water and the first check did not reveal any leaks, but now that it's been sitting overnight, there's a leak here. You can barely see it. It's just a wet spot. It's probably coming from here. And then down here, you can see more clearly. I tried to do some repairs on it, but it didn't work out yet. And then under here is a leak right there. So these leaks would not have shown up if I didn't leave the water in the tank overnight. And now I'll have to take all that water out and fix them. So based on the cubic inches of this fuel tank, it was calculated to be 29 gallons. It's almost emptied and that looks about right. Six containers, almost five gallons in each container. I refilled the tank and everything checked out, no leaks. So now I'm redraining it and I'm going to put this right here. This is a gas filler cap from a stock car that I used to own, a race car. And this, I think, is a valve to let off pressure inside or allow the pressure to equalize. So that should take care of that issue. And I'm gonna put it here because this is the part where things might fall into and I can reach and look through this into the bottom to deal with any issues. I won't be able to get this stuff in here, but I could just use a mirror to look inside if I want. I could probably put a scrub brush in there, whatever I might need to do to solve any issues like bacteria growing or something like that. I had a very difficult time welding this fuel tank together to the point that it was watertight or fuel tight, but of course I used water to test it. One of the reasons is this metal is very thin. It's something like 16 gauge. My best weld was right here. I welded this literally once and it was watertight. I put the bead up against the thick nut and then pushed it down onto the thin metal and that worked out. Here I welded this about five times before I was able to get it watertight. So, finally done, I'm ready to paint it. This is where the fuel tank's gonna go. Filler's right there, so I can rest a jerry can on top and just tip it over. And I'll have a tube leading up to the deck of the boat so that I can fill it from up there if I want. And here's the outlet. You might have been wondering why I have these rubber pieces here. It was very difficult to get behind here with a weld, so the simple solution was to just seal it with the rubber hose, and that works fine. 
Same thing here. I put a rubber hose there because trying to weld at the bottom of that V was very difficult. I couldn't get the welder underneath it well enough to create a watertight weld. So I just used a rubber radiator hose instead.